Try to get to the end of the level without too much issue. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Hey, Alan here and welcome to LI Triple M. So this is a little bit of a different video, a little bit of a Let's Play gaming video on one of my favorite games ever called Spelunky, which is an indie title, and we'll explain the game mechanics in a little bit. But I thought it might be interesting to have a little bit of a change of pace with this gameplay session with the announcement of Spelunky 2 that is supposed to be coming out in the fall. So that's a huge announcement. I've been waiting on this news for the past couple of years now. So I'm super excited for Spelunky 2. And because of that, let's play a little bit of Spelunky 1 and sort of explain how this game works and why it's basically my favorite game of all time. So let's get into this. So I'm playing on a keyboard instead of a uh, mouse or, or a control pad because this is kind of what I grew up on. Since the days of college, I played this game on my laptop and a keyboard without any controllers. So you might hear some keyboard clacking, and I apologize for that. But let's get started here with Spelunky and let's go on an adventure here. We can choose a character. Let's go with the default Spelunky man, but there are a bunch of characters to choose from. And the whole point of this game is to navigate yourselves down a level, uh, down multiple levels. So the first four levels are caves, next four levels are the jungle, uh, next four levels are ice caves, and the last four levels are sort of the ruins. And I like to always go for the more difficult secret path to hell, and those are an extra set of four levels. Um, after the ruins. So we're gonna go for that today. Uh, I haven't played this game in a few weeks, so it might be a little bit rusty, but let's see how this goes. Um, and let's head in. Start our Spelunky adventure. So the beauty of this game is that it's procedurally generated, meaning that even if you start off at level one, um, the game basically will be different every time, kind of randomly generated. That's one of the beauties of this game. You also don't level up between different games. So once you die, you die and go back to level one. So level one, you see on the upper left hand corner, I have four health only, only four health. That's a very limiting factor. Um, four bombs to blow up some uh, debris or material, uh, ground material as well as four ropes to climb up. So, oh, right here, I, I picked up a mouse here, and I see this little um, trap to my left, this gray block thing. If anything moves in its path, boom, an arrow shoots out, and that will kill two of your hit points. You only start off with four hit points. So that's a very valuable resource. You have to understand the traps in order to navigate around this. Let's say I fall onto these spikes over here. That'll insta-kill me. So I want to try to avoid that. Kill the snake, get the treasure. So a lot of this game is about, you know, obtaining treasure, keeping your health, and moving from level to level. And you can use the money that you collect in shops later on in the game, where you can buy more powerful items and equip items and such like that. So here we see that the exit's already on my lower right-hand side. I can get out there, no problem at all. But I want to see if I can get some more resources in this early game. The mines over here are fairly easy uh, levels. I afford to take a little bit more time, get on more resources. And see, here we see that the walls are blocking me. So let's just blow those walls up with a well-placed bomb. Boom. And we get some treasure. And also this damsel in distress, um, which is a little bit of an outdated term these days in 2020. But this damsel can be brought... Oops, I just wasted a rope there accidentally. Um, my bad. But I can bring the damsel to the end of the level, and at the end of the level, I'll get one extra health because I brought the damsel to the end of the level. And yeah, right now, nothing too bad. I don't want to blow anything else up. And we have a very uneventful level one. Let's go. Not that bad. I wasted one rope accidentally, but I got a damsel, so it's okay. 
Ah, so okay, we see our first important item here, this locked chest. I have to find the key that goes into this locked chest. But before that, ooh, what do we have here? We have a shopkeeper. And so here we can use our $14,800 that we picked up in the first level to buy some items. So paste, I think it's very important. We need paste. Uh, and the big bomb box. And that's about all I can afford right now. If I get some more money, I might decide to uh, work my way up there to buy the extra bombs. Bombs are extremely important resources right now. Um, unfortunately, I need to spend a rope to get this chest. Uh, and that leaves me with only one rope, as you can see on the upper left-hand corner. One rope by five health and some paste. That's not too bad. So the paste allows me to stick the bombs onto the walls and any other terrain. Oh, the skeleton. Gotta get that skeleton with my whip. So you start off with a whip as your like main weapon and you can jump on most enemies to kill them, kind of like Mario. Um, and here we go, the last rope. I'm all out of ropes, uh, largely because of my one mistake in the first level. That's fine, I break this pot. These wooden chests give you items, so you can get like bombs, you can get robes, you can get other items. I'm actually hoping for some ropes right now. And no, I get a teleporter, which is one of the riskiest items, I won't touch that at all. The teleporter can teleport you, oh here are some ropes, uh, basically anywhere on the map, including within the walls themselves. So if you get teleported inside the walls, you're dead. That's an insta-kill. I don't want to die just yet. Let's get moving. I'm spending a lot of time talking, and I don't like that. I'll blow up this wall here. I can't spend too much time talking on each level, because at the 2 minute 30 mark of every level, um, basically an event will occur where a ghost will pop out, and the ghost will insta-kill you at any time. So I, oops, took some damage. My bad. The spiders can be annoying. Ah, here's the key. I want to get to the other side first and... Other side first, so... So, let's spring the arrow trap. It'll hit the damsel. And I could sacrifice the damsel on this altar and get a good item in return. And this is not the item I want. This is climbing gloves. It allows you to climb on the walls without any ropes and stuff. I don't like it because it interferes with my movement. So, let's move to the end. And right now we see that Indeed, the ghost is going to come up here, which will insta-kill me if it reaches me. But I'm going to take this one altar, this one golden statue head. What I did at the end is that I can take the golden statue head and bring it to the end of the level. If I bring that to the end of the level, I get 5,000 extra gold. But in doing so, in disturbing the golden head, a giant boulder comes out like Indiana Jones style. So I have to navigate around the boulder, navigate around the ghost. And here I am at the end of the level. So two levels down, uh, pretty good. I forgot to buy the bombs uh, after getting more money, so that was a mistake. Uh, it's a lot harder to play and talk than one might think. So let's continue moving forward. Uh, the compass is really important. It tells you where the exit is. So now you see on the lower right-hand corner, which might be blocked by my face, uh, there's an arrow pointing downwards. Buy some more bombs, and that's about all the money I can spend. So this snake can spit out venom. I don't want to get touched by that. Get the spider. And we're trucking along here. Very pleasant. Don't want to die on the spikes. Excellent. Get the rock. Get the gold. Kill the snakes. Here. Jump on the dude. Get the damsel. Kill the bat. Kill the spider. So nothing terribly new. The scorpions are dangerous. Ooh. So the scorpion got itself stuck in a web. So I want to get the spider. Do I need to get the spider? Yeah, I can get some extra gold. The spider drops paste, which is particularly useful. But I already bought the paste. But the spider also drops some useful gems. And that's pretty good at this point. So 
right now we're just moving along. The mines are the easiest set of four levels. The jungle is next, and that is significantly more difficult than the mines. And you can easily die in the jungle if you have minimal experience with that. Let's see, here we go, level three completed, and we keep on going along. Let's see. Um, I'll blow up the wall over here, get a couple of gems. No problem at all. So the goal of the mines for me is to get as much money as possible, since it's the easiest set of levels. And so I can use that money to buy useful items. Ooh, didn't run away quickly enough. That's uh, unnecessary damage. Ooh, got a little lucky bounce there. And we see another altar. If we can find another damsel and sacrifice that, her on the altar, that would be particularly useful. Gotta be careful here with it. Venom. Let's see if we can find another damsel. Maybe we can. Okay. Oh, I hear the damsel. Where is the damsel? Ah, excellent. So, we can bomb our way through and sacrifice another damsel on the altar. And here we get something really special if we can do that. So, let's do it. This way. Excellent. Avoid the spider. Get all the gems. Very methodical process. Oops. You can do kind of a corner jump, which is what I'm trying to do over here. Use a rope. And at this point, if you sacrifice two live damsels, you get this Kapala. And the Kapala basically allows you to suck the blood out of all the enemies and regain health that way. So you see there are a couple blood droplets that came out and I can gradually restore my health that way. So that's a very important item, especially if you get lucky like I did right here. Get it early on. And here we go. Spike shoes are very important, especially in the ice terrain. Everything else not particular. So buy the spike shoes at the store. What's also interesting is that you can like kill the shop owner and steal items, but that's really risky because if you kill a shop owner or damage the store in any way, then uh, later on, on every subsequent level, basically shop owner will have like revenge on you and they'll be like attacking you and such. So I don't want to do that. I want to be on the nice side to the shop owners. Don't rob him, don't steal him, don't kill him. Um, just buy from him. And we work our way to the jungle. So the jungle is a whole new world level. And again, procedurally generated. Everything's random here um, based off like certain patterns. Blue frogs are particularly annoying because they have these like weird jump patterns. Lots of traps, like this tiki trap will take two health. It's kind of like motion activated. So I want to kind of stay out of the way. The red piranha plant is particularly dangerous. I don't like this uh, because the red piranha plant will eat you. It's a one hit KO. So I'm just going to blow up the entire tree and like not have to deal with the piranha plant at all. What's also a little bit annoying is all the monkeys over here that have to climb across the vines. So I don't want to deal with that as well because the monkeys will steal items from you and stun you. They don't do any damage to you. But if they stun you and I fall into the traps, that's an insta-kill. So I want to avoid that. So I'll bomb my way out of this scenario. I don't like to use so many bombs so early, but I have to... Ooh. I heard a little beep, and this comes from the chest with the lock and key I found in, I think, the second or third level. And this allows me to try to find a secret level called the Black Market. And that's part of what I want to do in terms of reaching the secret hell levels. Oh, so now it's beeping faster, so I know it's probably around here. So I'll try to bomb this area. There is also a pair of glasses in the wall. So I'll take the pair of glasses, bomb the wall. Okay. Ugh, use the last rope. 
because I don't want to be stunned by that stupid monkey. Being stunned by the monkey is like one of the most annoying things in the world. And it can, one stun could lead to like a whole bunch of damage or even death. So want to avoid that at all costs. So right now I'm going to try to get the golden idol again. I don't know if I can reach it. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, that's annoying. Let's see here. I think I can reach it. There we go. A bomb underneath it. So there we go. And again, I'm talking too much. So I go into the black market. One of the first steps to reaching hell. I don't have any ropes, I don't have much money, and that's a problem. Because I need 50,000 gold to buy a specific item. And unfortunately, I don't have 50,000 gold, I only have 40,000 gold. Because I got a very early black market. Black market can be any one of the four jungle levels. And... Because it can be any one of the four jungle levels, uh, usually you want it to be on the later side in case you know you can get some more money. Right now, oh boy, I have to rob the stores. That means in order to get the item because I cannot afford it. So what's the most efficient way to do this? Usually I like to like maybe I like hide over here and like start throwing bombs. Yeah. So now I threw a bomb at the store. And the shop owners are angry, and I don't see them, which is a problem. I don't know where they are, and if I don't know where they are, I don't know if I should move forward or not. Let's see, yeah, where are they? Okay, I don't see them. Great, I have a shotgun. And now it's like free for all. The, the bad thing is I don't have any ropes. So because I don't have any ropes, ugh can't do a lot of these. so they're kind of killing themselves right now which is interesting um, but I need to find my way down somehow uh, let's see okay 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 I got them and now let's see if I can start bombing my way down this way did I kill him no he's still alive He's dead. Okay, so all this effort for this Ankh, the $50,000 item that I couldn't afford, I had to bomb and kill all of the shopkeepers in order to get it. Okay, damsel. Oh boy. Oh boy, this is... I don't like this. Now the goal is to make it to the end of the level. Ugh. I got some springy shoes, which is good. And we're at the end of the level. Holy moly. I don't know how this is going to go. So now all the shopkeepers are angry at me. So I see a vengeful shopkeeper at the end of every level now. And I really want a rope or like a jetpack or something. I guess I'll use this moment to kind of cool down. <sighs> Maybe collect some gold? I don't know. See, there's a shopkeeper right below me. And he has a gun. He's ready to, like, destroy me. Uh, I don't know what to do. I guess I have to try to navigate my way down. And this is, again, you know, procedurally generated. So every level is different. at least the enemies I don't know what to do here do I go down and like just shoot Crap. and I shot just a little too early I mistimed my jump so the onk revives you at the very end uh, but I needed the onk to do something else in order to get to hell so the Ankh revived me because of my mistimed jump. So now we're not reaching hell today. That's fine. Uh, 
we're not reaching health today. Maybe for a different video. But we can still try to go as long as possible with this particular run. Maybe get some more gold or something. I don't know. Here's the damsel. I don't know if I can eat the damsel. And see that shopkeeper in the center over there guarding the treasure chest. He's looking mighty mad. Oh, oh no, there are two of them. Let's go, let's go. Are they dead? I think I might have killed both of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're mega dead. Well, let's try to beat this game normally at the very least. I don't think I can get to hell. I definitely can't. Because I needed the Ankh. I need to save the Ankh that revives me. Keep on trucking along. Okay, a little bit of calmer music. Something happened to some of the shopkeepers. And here we go, shopkeeper music. And I see I'm wanted over there. The shopkeeper doesn't have any good items, so I won't bother him to steal some more items. See what we can do. This might be a very calm level, despite the music that's going on. Just try to make it to the end without any big issues. Okay, the two guys with boomerangs. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, I killed one of the guys. Killed two of the guys. Excellent. some blood to farm because I sell the Kapala that gives me extra health if I collect a certain amount of blood get some extra gold why not be careful of the tiki trap get some extra blood that's cool oops I want to get that gold but I guess I mistimed something it's okay. Let's try to make it to the ice levels and see where we stand. This is not a bad run. It's not a hell run. But now we have this open ice level area. And it's kind of chiller. Uh, literally and figuratively. Ha! <laughs> then the jungle level. Here the compass is particularly useful because I don't know where things are because you don't know the whole level. And the compass is pointing almost straight down to the exit, so I want to kind of work my way there. Uh, yeah, not too bad there. So, so there are lots of like new enemies here. There are these like snowmen, abominable snowmen, which you can kill with spike shoes jumping on top of them. There's also this like timed motion sensor bomb so if I go on this time motion sensor bomb and after about a second or two it blows up so we got to be careful there but since I don't have like a jet pack that can fly me around uh, that's a really good item but we did not encounter it I'm not going to do too much exploring just try to get to the end of the level without too much issue Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. Didn't die. I want to jump down and shoot them. But I mistimed something. And I got knocked and stunned. The damage isn't particularly bad, but it's being stunned. And you kind of lose all control of being able to move or jump or anything. And so I could have fallen to my death in like a pit. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. This dude, come on. <sighs> Let's see. Can I kill him? Yeah. There we go. This giant abominable snowman. Do not like him at all. He creates icicles that fall from the ceiling. And oh, look at that. So this is a new computer, a new account for Steam, and I can unlock a character. If I open up this coffin box, I get a new, like, skin. 
I can play with. Uh, but yeah, let's do it. Why not? Let's see what skin I get if I can reach that far. I need to kill these dudes first. Okay, well, I unlocked the skin, some Eskimo character, but this Eskimo character insta died on the spikes. So, oh no! There's the, the shopkeeper, he didn't see me somehow. Oh no. Come on, come on, get closer, get closer. There we go. Hey, I picked myself another shotgun. There we go. And we're not playing badly. We can probably beat the game normally at this pace. Ah, the, the big tiki head. So if I had the Ankh over here and did not die in the jungle level, I can self-kill myself on this level. And then I would respawn inside of this giant blue head. And that brings me one step closer to reaching hell. But since I don't have the tiki, uh, not the Tiki, the Ankh anymore, I can't do that. But I can sa still sacrifice some dead bodies. And kind of chill our way towards the end of the level. Okay, giant water pit. Interesting. I usually don't go to these water pits. But I feel like being a little bit adventurous. some of the items, yo. Give me some of that item goodness. Oh no! The snake walked onto the, uh, the motion sensor bomb, which set it off as I timed my jump. So the snake set up the bomb that ended up killing me. How unfortunate. But I suppose this is a good introduction to Spelunky. We spent about 23 minutes playing the game. I didn't beat the game, which is unfortunate because of some mishap and interaction between the animals, uh, the snake, and the motion sensor bomb. But this is why I love this game. It's this combination of, okay, you have to understand all the subtle interactions and all of the enemies and traps and how they work together and sort of visualize your movements like two or three steps in advance and know like how far you can jump, how far you can throw things. Um, and you'll die a lot of times in Spelunky. And you'll get back every time. You're like, man, I could have done this a little bit differently. Or maybe I mistimed this or did something, made a bad decision there. And you get back into it, try to beat it. So that's all the time we have for today for Spelunky. There's a lot more to this game, but unfortunately, we won't be able to see it right now. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this change of pace. Um, until next time, keep it logical. Take care, everyone.